and we are here with the second tutorial about how to build a very cool uh, blog with Nuxt. In this tutorial, we are going to build this beautiful table of content navigation for our blog, and we are also going to create uh, this uh, small menu that we have on the right that we can use to navigate to different articles and it's going to allow our users to basically do binge reading among all of our blog posts. Also, we are going to make this menu fully responsive, so mobile ready. Whenever we shrink the page and go to mobile, this uh, menu is going to just shrink and become a collapsible from the top of the page. So everything is very, very aesthetic, polished and cool. Let's go. We are back on our uh, blog page and what we have now is this. So we have all of our articles. We can click on any of it and then we can go into the blog we have a complete blog post so what we are going to build today is a responsive table of content that is going to be placed here on the right and then when we shrink the page it's going to become a drop down menu from the top and it's going to have a very cool indicator that is going to highlight which section we are currently reading and it, it is inspired by the one from Nuxt UI Pro. So if we go to the official Nuxt page, we can see on the right, we have this component that automatically highlights and adjusts based on which section we are currently reading. And what we are going to do is exactly this. We are going to emulate this component. This component is from Nuxt UI Pro. We are going to create our own so you have it available for any project. To start with, we are going to change a little bit the layout here. We uh, are going to basically have the content rendered a little bit on the left and then on the right we are going to have a menu uh, which inside we are going to place our uh, table of content and also some commands and controls so to start with we can go into the code and add a new component article menu and then we can place this component inside our uh, page our blog page so if we go to our blog page here we have this content uh, renderer here. It's effectively rendering the content that we are reading. We are going to uh, render this article menu here. And if we have our table of content, we are going to render the article menu, pass the table of content, and also these links that are going to be the uh, articles linked to the current article. Because in this way, we are going to have a way to automatically display uh, related articles or similar articles inside the blog post. In this way, you are going to push uh, readers to navigate uh, inside your blog. Now, this is complaining for the cast, but it's actually existing. So it's kind of an ax problem. If we go to the shared types, we have this cast function, which is just returning the argument as t and i'm using this utility function because otherwise it gives some uh, weird linting here because we are casting inside html it's just for the sake of es code readability but it is complaining i don't know why it's it's working so we can just leave it be so we can now create this uh, links variable to do that we can go uh, here move this down and then data as links and we are going to use again sync data. We are going to give it some key. In this case, it's going to be the linked articles. We are going to have this function, which is going to be a sync first to get uh, the, all the elements. So we are getting all the articles uh, that have a different path from the current one. Order by, so we can use Lodash to order by the intersection of the tags between the current article and the one that we are currently looking. So basically we are ordering our fetched articles by the, the length of the intersection that we have with these tags, taking all the articles that have the highest uh, number of tags intersection with the current one. In this way, we are going to basically get the similar one based on the tags that we defined on them. And then we can slice, so we can hit save. And now we have our links correctly fetched on the server and we are passing them to our article menu. So we can go into our article menu and actually code this uh, stuff. So we are going to define some uh, composables. We have our window scroll. Uh, then we have our properties. One is the, the table of content from Nux content, and the other one is the uh, linked article that we just passed. Then we have a route and whether we are mounted. Define this very simple computer property that is going to compute the scroll percentage. We have this very simple utility function that it's going to be used to scroll to the top. So we are scrolling to top zero and we are also removing the fragment. And now we are ready to define the HTML. Inside this div, first we are going to define this uh, div right here, which is going to be a very simple bar on the top. Uh, that is going to display at which percentage of the blog post we are currently in. We can hit save. We can also try to see if this already works. And we can see on the top, we have this bar that automatically adjusts, which is something very cool because also if we go uh, to, the, for example, mobile, 
having this bar on the top is very very cool uh, i've seen this in multiple blogs and it's it's very aesthetic to have this then we can keep going define uh the two div so the first one is going to be displayed here on the right and it's going to shift the content on the left whenever we are on large screen and whenever we collapse to mobile it's going to switch uh, becoming a top uh, menu that we can expand vertically and then select the section that we want to jump into to do that we are going to define two divs one is going to be this one and it's going to uh, have the position to sticky in this way whenever we scroll down it's going to remain at the top here we're going to have it always available at any time and in case we are on mobile we can use this other div right here which we can see it's fixed it's on the top it's going to basically be a top bar right here and we are making it disappear whenever our scroll percentage is less or equal than zero this means that when we are at the top it's going to be invisible and when we scroll it's going to appear you can already see that on the right we have this section which is already uh, styled up because we gave it uh, some width here so we have our content already perfectly styled up it's aligned to the left now we can start from uh, the uh, one on the large screens we're going to have a table of content with some controls under it for example the button to scroll top and to go to all articles and then down we're going to have a collapsible from Nuxt UI that we can use to expand and then navigate uh, to different related articles. So to do that we can just define the HTML right here. It's going to just have a, a title for the table of content and then we are going to define this uh, talk navigation menu which is exactly the uh, navigation menu that we are going to code a little bit later so we can just for now comment this we can see that we have our title we have our controls we can hit save and now we have our controls here to go uh, to the top and then also to go to all articles uh, i don't know why this one is not sticking on the top we can see why it's not sticking on the top because we have this sticky top here so we can just uh, remove from here and put it here, go back to our page and we can see that now it sticks on the top. This is very cool because you see we are scrolling and we have always our controls ready here to be clicked. If we go down and shrink to mobile, we can see that this disappears and now it's going to be placed on the top. And after these controls, we can have this very big collapsible component from Nuxt UI. And what we are doing is just giving some, some styling and then we have a button to trigger it. It's a normal button that whenever we click, it's going to expand this U carousel always from Nuxt UI, in which we are rendering all the cards for the uh, connected articles. We see here, these links are the one that we passed right here. We see that we have this collapsible that we can expand and we have here all the related articles, which is very, very cool. In this case, uh, the tags were the same for both. So it's going to link all the three of them. But of course, this linking between the articles is going to be dynamic. Every time you add a new blog post, it's going to automatically fetch the related articles and just display them here. Now, the only thing that we're missing is the table of content, which is going to require a little bit of coding because we want to emulate this component from Nuxt UI as the best that we can. So to do that, we can go here and we can start coding this stock navigation menu. We can create a component and we are having these errors on this utilities function. It's kind of weird because we have the utility on the shared utils types. It's exported, so I don't really know why it is complete but there's no problem as we can see that everything is working and we have no errors if you're having this problem too do not worry so we can go inside our newly created talk navigation menu and we are going to code this component using motion and if you haven't watched the video in which we integrate motion in this template for the first time i suggest you just to to look at it so what we're going to do is first just import all the things that we need we are going to import the the, the types from Nux content. We are going to use Lodash because it's it's easier to work with and then also motion. And then we are going to have these properties. So first is just the props. We are going to pass the table of content from Nux content, whether we want to hide the indicator. And then we have the maximum depth of the elements that we want to display. Then we are using, of course, an intersection observer to uh, observe which section are currently visible and update the table of content accordingly. Then we have all the flattened links. So this one, what we are doing is just taking all the links inside the table of content. We are flattening recursively and then filtering with a max depth. So basically, if we have, for example, uh, three H1 headers, uh, each one having two H2 headers, we are just going to flatten all of them and get a single array 
uh, because we are then rendering this stuff as a normal list with some staggering here based on the depth. So in this way, the indicator can be adjusted very easily. And then finally, we have this navigation element, which is just a template ref we are going to use. Then we are going to have these two refs, a map having as the key, the ID of the section and as the value, some property that we can use and update to link the uh, sections from the blog. So for example, this section right here to the corresponding sections on the table of content. It's going to be much more clear when we actually code the logic and we are initializing it to an empty map. Then we have the style for the indicator and there are only two properties that we need. One is uh, the top and that one is the height. Then we are going to have the unmounted and on unmounted events. We are just creating an intersection observer in which in the callback, we are simply updating the visibility map. You can see here, we are getting the visibility map uh, with the ID of the current target. And then we are updating the visible property, this one, to whether it is intersecting or not. And then for each of the flattened links, we are getting the corresponding element into the actual uh, document. If it's not present, we just return. Otherwise, we initialized our visibility map. You can see that we are creating this object with the link as the current link coming from here. Then we initialize the visible to false. We then link this to the link element of the navigation element. You can see we are using the navl value to query selector for this ID that we are going to place inside the div. And then finally, we are going to give it some index. In this way, we can order them later to actually uh, adjust the indicator accordingly. And finally, we are observing all of the elements from the actual content of the DOM. And finally, of course, in the unmounted event, we can uh, disconnect the observer to keep everything clean. We want to do uh, two more things before coding the HTML. One is going to be this one. So whenever the visibility map changes even deeply, we are going to run this function, which is going to be this one. And in this function, we are updating the style of our indicator. So you can see if our uh, indicator is hidden, we just return because we do not need this function. Then we take our visibility map, our values, and we sort based on the index. So we get these sorted entries. Then we are going to get the start index. So basically the first index that is visible. Then we are computing the top, take all the elements up to the uh, start index, and then computing actually the height of this stuff. In this way, we know the actual height of this section right here. And then we compute the height. To compute the height, we just iterate through the sorted entries and we just sum the height of all the talk links that are actually visible. So for whatever link that is visible, so if we go, to, for example, in this case, you see we have two links visible because one is here and one is down here. Whenever we have two elements visible, this algorithm is just going to sum this height plus this height. And so the indicator is going to adjust dynamically based on how many elements are visible on the navigation menu. Finally, we are updating the style of the indicator. Now with this code, we are ready to code HTML and we are going to have our very cool navigation menu. To do that, we can start with our nav tag. So like this, it's going to be relative because we're going to have some absolute position at div that we're going to give it some maximum height and then adjust the overflow. And now we are going to display our indicator. Our indicator is, of course, going to be a motion div. In this way, it's going to adjust uh, with animation. It's going to be very cool. It's just going to have some width, some styling, some background. You can, of course, customize. Then we are going to give it some transition. In this case, I'm going to give it 100 milliseconds and simply telling him to animate the top value and the height value. This is just what we're doing. And since we are updating this indicator style, uh, motion is going to take care to animate smoothly between all of these values. Then we are going to have our actual table uh, of content. So we are going to have an unordered list, link it to our navigation element, give it some style, some padding and stuff like this. Conditionally render our padding on the left, whether we are hiding or not the indicator. So if we are showing the indicator, give it some padding, otherwise just go all the way to the left. And then for each one of our links, we are going to render them. So we can see here that this list item is going to have this specific ID, which is going to be the ID of the content section with a prefix of link dash. It is exactly how we are getting our elements. You see here, 
we are taking the navigation element, taking the table of content link using this notation right here. And this is very important. That is the same as this, of course, because we are linking this list element with the content links. And then we are doing this for all of the flattened links. We are doing some titles, some, some flex, some styling. We are rendering our link tag with some ref where we go to the actual fragment of the ID. We give it some styling so that it displays ellipses without overflowing. And then we can conditionally render some style. Specifically, uh, we are going to make it highlighted with text primary if we are actually visible. And we are going to give it some paddy left if the tap is uh, greater than two. Actually, I'm seeing here that for a depth of two or greater than two, we are going to give it the same padding, which is not ideal. So to fix this, we can do something a little bit more advanced. What we can do is just use some variables here. So we can do some var padding, and then we move this on the normal class, and then we can define this padding as a style. So we can just give it some style tag t dot depth, which is going to be either zero, one, or two depth times two. So for example, if we are depth two, it's going to be four pixels. So we can do actually times four, give it some pixel. We are actually going to dynamically adjust the padding uh, based on our depth. So if we are depth one, it's going to have four pixels, otherwise eight and so on. Our uh, table of content depth is limited by our configuration here. So maximum is going to be three. And now in theory, we should have our table of contents correctly uh, styled up. We can see that, okay, the navigation menu is not present, but it's not visible because on the article menu, we, I think we comment out this one. Yes, so we can just comment it in. We have our indicator correctly displayed and everything should be working perfectly fine. So if we go down, we can see that indicator dynamically adjusts and it's super cool. We can zoom in a little bit. It's adjusting based on which section we are currently reading. And also if we scroll to top, everything works. And if we click, it's going to adjust. And of course, in this situation, you see it's highlighting a lot of sections because my sections are actually pretty small. We can also add a background to this indicator right here. At the moment, it's not visible. Div here, absolutely positioned. Background of, I don't know, muted, we can try. We have this line, but our indicator is not displaying because it's behind, smaller Z index, and now it is working, it's very cool. We have also the track. Uh, now we need to code the situation in which we are on mobile. So if we shrink down, we see that it disappears. So the whole thing is just going to be a very huge collapsible like this. The trigger is just uh, a div that spans on the whole width and is going to have some backdrop blur which is extremely cool and then the content is going to be a very simple column in which we have first our navigation menu which is the exact same component as this one you can see so we do not repeat ourselves we are going to give it some maximum height in this way is not going to span through the whole screen that we have some separator and then we have a section in which we display uh, the related articles, which is exactly the same as the one we did here. Hit save, reload. Since we are not scrolled, we do not see anything. So everything is very clear. As soon as we scroll, this thing appears. So we can just click this. Uh, actually, we cannot because it's being displayed on the top here. And this is probably because, yes, we gave this sticky top here. So we can make this conditional. We can give it some sticky and also this one. So we can make it conditional, go back here. And now our uh, section is correctly displayed. You can see that we are scrolling. We have this section, uh, this button on the top, which has some backdrop blur. You think you can see this. And as we click, it's going to open our navigation menu and also all the related articles, which is extremely cool. You can just scroll down and see that the navigation menu updates. We can also just click and navigate to whatever section we want. We can just collapse it down and if we go to large screen, we have this on the right. So at this point, we have a very complete blog page, which is extremely cool, very good features. Readers can just binge read around your blog. Uh, we have related articles automatically being linked. We have some controls, a very cool navigation menu and the content being displayed. I think for today's tutorial, that's enough. We are going to have one last video in which we are going to optimize this blog for SEO. So we are going to use structured data and the SEO meta and all the stuff that we need using Nuxt SEO package. So be sure to stick around. And yes, that's it for today's video. Cheers.